Hi, welcome to Spiritual Connection. I'm your host, Katie Augustine. And I'm happy to be here with all of y'all tonight. And you know, one of my um, core values is connection. And that shows up in a lot of areas of my life. And that's really why I wanted to start this show. Mm -hmm. So it's about, you know, we're all gonna connect with each other as well as facilitate connecting with our spiritual selves. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be up to. And we're gonna have interviews and features with, with different people from the community. They're gonna talk about their spiritual journey, what they do, what services they offer, and really connect you with what you might need to continue or start your spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. So we're happy to have all of the audience with us tonight. And I'm also thrilled to have my, for my guest tonight, Rebecca Filio. Hi, it's yeah, great hi. to be here. Yeah, <laughs> so Rebecca's with Body Wise Yoga Therapy. Yes. And she's a spiritual healer mm -hmm. and certified yoga therapist. Yes. And she focuses on trauma recovery support and emotional healing for women, mm -hmm. right? Yes, Okay, yes. and she is the founder of the Body Wise Yoga Therapy. Yes, my baby. So, yeah, so welcome, um, Rebecca. And you go by yeah. Becca, really. Becca, yes. Becca, so I'm going to call yes. you that tonight. Okay. Okay. And I, I recently met um, Becca. Yes. And I asked her immediately <laughs> if she would come on the show and, and talk, to us, talk to us about her spiritual journey yeah. and what she's up to. So the first question I want to know is, so how did you find this passion of yours? So this passion kind of came out of nowhere. Um, I, in high school, um, had severe anxiety um, from a childhood trauma that I went through as a kid. And, you know, I went through a lot in high school. I ended up on medication mm -hmm. and I ended up being hospitalized because of the medication because it mm -hmm. ended up making things worse than they were to begin mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. um, so I was hospitalized with suicidal ideation. I was an anorexic. Mm -hmm. um, I was self-harming every day and I was basically planning out ways to end my life. And when I got out of the hospital eight days later, uh, it hit me that there had to be another way to feel better and to not feel so crappy all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I ended up actually leaving high school a year early because I had to make the choice between my health and my well-being and finishing my high school degree, which I did anyways. I got my GED. Mm -hmm. and. I, one of my friends at the time just like pulled me into a yoga class one day and she was like, mm -hmm. no, just, just try it. You have nothing else to do. You're at home all the time. Mm -hmm. I want to spend time with you. Come to this yoga class with me. Really? Um, and I was very hesitant at first. Um, I grew up a ballet dancer, so I was into the whole movement thing and I mm -hmm. loved it. But the whole spirituality side of it, I was very turned off by. I thought it was very out there, woo, -woo granola. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, mm -hmm. ah, okay, I don't know about this. Um, and at the end of that first yoga class, I was laying in Shavasana mm -hmm. and a really deep part of me just knew that that was where I was supposed to be at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I got addicted <laughs> to yoga. I you know, started practicing every day, maybe even twice a day mm -hmm. when I first started out. And it really helped me heal through everything that I had been through. Um, mm -hmm. I am not on medication. I mean, this was mm -hmm. almost five years ago at this oh. point, um, but I stopped taking medication right away and I started healing, which mm -hmm. was what I wanted in the first place. Right. So, um, you know, eventually that yoga practice turned into yoga teacher training. And then the yoga teacher training turned into yoga therapy training. Mm -hmm. And the yoga therapy training turned into everything else. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So that was, so you really started with your own healing. And, right. And found yoga as a way to precipitate that. Right. Huh. Right. And what yeah. did your friend say after that? What? Um. So she supported me the entire way through. I still talk to her every now and then. And mm -hmm. she's like, you know, who would have thought it would mm -hmm. become this big of a part of your life? Yeah. Because I never would have imagined it. Um, I always saw myself going down the traditional route of, you know, getting a degree in college and, mm -hmm. you know, working mm -hmm. nine to five and whatnot. And now here I am. <laughs> so you decided so, not to go to college. So I didn't go to college. On your training with right. Your so I'm focusing on furthering my training and this modality of healing right now and, mm -hmm. you know, just letting things fall into place. Uh huh. Yeah. So how does it work for you um, in what you do with this yoga therapy? What is. 
Can you explain what that is exactly? Yeah, so um, yoga therapy is very similar to somatic healing. Um, so that's kind of like the westernized version of it, I would mm -hmm, say. Mm -hmm. um, when I say yoga therapy, a lot of people either assume physical therapy or um, regular talk therapy mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. that's all we know. Right. Um, but I'd, I'd never heard the term. Right. Yoga so therapy. it's very different. Um, it has a lot to do with Ayurvedic psychology. So Ayurveda is the sister science to yoga. Mm -hmm. um, and it's more of a mind, body, spirit approach and natural mm -hmm. healing modality. Um, and a lot of people in this realm of wellness and people who are here in their life are very familiar with Ayurveda, but they're only familiar with the physical aspect of it, not so mm -hmm. much the mental and the spiritual aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So that kind of informs the practice. So it's all about how the body holds on to traumas and emotions and experiences and memories and um, kind of the science behind why they get stored, the places they get stored and mm -hmm. you know why they stay there mm -hmm. um, and how they affect our nervous system and our subconscious mind and our lives. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it has a big impact. Yeah. Um, I've been talking to other guests about that, how important that is. Yeah. Yeah, so you studied this and now you practice it. Um, right. How, how do you do that? Where? And right. So I teach yoga at a studio locally, Yoga 203 in Norwalk. It's okay. right on Wall Street. Okay. Um, and I work out of the studio with my practice. Mm -hmm. So that's where I see my clients. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, always private, one-on-one, -on -one, confidential. Mm -hmm. um, I have an intake form, uh, liability, mm -hmm. you know, all the, all mm -hmm. the bells and whistles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and then it really is uh, a mix of guided by the client and what they feel they are ready for mm -hmm. and intuition of what I think they might be ready for. Mm -hmm. And of course, I never force anybody to go somewhere they're not ready to go, mm -hmm. but I might suggest it mm -hmm. if I find that, okay, I think they can go there. I think this is just the fear getting in the way of it. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times we are most resistant to what we need the most at yeah. the time. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really kind of just on a one-on-one -on -one unique basis every single time. Right. Because every, every client Everybody's is different. different. Right. Yeah. And yeah. even if somebody, if, even if two clients have experienced the exact same trauma, they're going to hold it and store it and process it a different way because we're mm -hmm. all unique. So, right. so why do you think this particular modality is so effective with trauma? <sighs> I think and I don't want to discredit Western medicine here because Western mm -hmm. medicine has done a lot for me personally in my healing journey, mm -hmm. um, therapy wise. And, you know, the hospitalization, although um, not maybe exactly what I needed, did help get mm -hmm. me through that time right. in my life. Right. Um, but I think that yoga therapy is different in the sense that it's a mind, body, spirit approach. We're not discounting this entire side to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we're not discounting the fact that it you know, there's not a quick fix for trauma. There's not mm -hmm. a Band-Aid that you can put over an imaginary wound and pretend that it's gone. Mm -hmm. It stays with you. And mm -hmm. even though you think you're past it, a few years later, maybe it'll come back up in a different way. And it will have changed and grown as you change and grow. I see. So this really is not only healing and helping, or I don't want to say healing because at the end of the day, I'm not the one healing you. You're the one showing up and deciding to heal yourself and giving mm -hmm. yourself permission to do the work. Okay. And I'm holding space for that. Um, so that's my main goal is not to so much take power away from clients by saying, this is your problem. Let me fix it. You're broken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But by saying, okay, tell me what's going on. What do you think is important? How do you think you feel about this and why? And what can you do? right now to change that mm -hmm. um, and, and really empowering these women to step into the, the knowing that they already have all, of, all the things they need to mm -hmm. move forward. It's yeah. just a matter of owning that and right. stepping up to the plate. Yeah. Sounds like coaching yeah. in a way. Yeah. So you only work with women? I only work with women right now um, and you know that might change in the future but mm -hmm. I feel like my gifts and my work right now is very needed in the realm of divine feminine and, and healing women because there's a long history of repression mm. and um, societal abuse and mm. misunderstanding mm -hmm. and trauma. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it's really important to start waking mm -hmm. that, you know, other side of femininity up. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. And this is also a personal journey for you because right. you went through it yourself. Right, right. How does that inform your, your work? 
Right, so I was actually talking to a friend about this at lunch today, and this is actually the third time it's come up today in wow. three different conversations, so it seems wow. to be a theme of the day for me. Um, but I think that, you know, all healers, no matter what, I think have some sort of either call or push into this realm, mm -hmm. or they have a reason to start doing this work. Um, we don't just fall into its lap and decide that we're going to magically heal people. We know what it takes to get there. We've done the work ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. And we arrive from a place of empathy and understanding that, you know, there's a deeper kind of insight and in knowing when you've been there yourself, mm. where mm. you don't need to try to force somebody to explain it to you or put it into words, mm -hmm. where you can just know and mm -hmm. hold space for that and be there with them mm -hmm. and say, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And if I, if I can get through it, if I can stop myself, from ending my life mm. and choosing this other path mm. and continuing to show up for it, so can you. Yeah. It's just a matter of believing that. Yeah, so. yeah that's very powerful. Yeah. I, I would think that would be extremely um, helpful to people. Right. To be there. It's like you're there with them, literally. Right. You're walking the path with them. Right. And, and right. like you said, you're not fixing them, you're not um, necessarily healing them but you're facilitating it right. and walking with them. Yep. That's, that's really powerful. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's really good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this has been um, your journey for the last several years. Yep. And what do you see moving forward? So I have a lot of big dreams moving forward. Uh -huh. um, right now I have my basic 120 hour yoga therapy training plus a lot of other modalities that I bring in. I use tapping and Reiki, um, and you know, I'm not a shaman. I've never done a, an apprenticeship like you have, uh -huh. um, but I am very connected to Native American culture. I have Native American roots, mm -hmm. and so I like to pull in a lot of spirit guides, totem animals, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, basically, whatever works for the client, because no matter the identity you give the spirit guide, if it mm -hmm. works for you, it works for you, and mm -hmm. that's okay. Yeah, um, right. So, you know, I do plan on furthering my education and getting my 800 hour yoga therapy certification. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually going down to Florida, back to the same institute, okay. to get my yoga nidra training, which is part of that 800 hour comprehensive uh -huh. training. Mm -hmm. So, it's all about the science of how this deep meditative work literally changes the physical structure of a traumatized yeah. brain yeah. and changes your neural pathways and changes your nervous system. Mm. I'm really excited about that. And, you know, tenure plan as long as everything keeps mm -hmm. going the way it's going. My ultimate goal is to, you know, one day open a holistic trauma recovery center oh, awesome. where I pull in not only the work that I do, but work mm -hmm. that other people do that mm -hmm. might be a little bit different. But again, what works for you works. And there are 10,000 paths up a, up a mountain. They all get you to the same place. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, that's what I would really love to do one day is to open up a whole center where people can come and remember that maybe it doesn't have to be so hard or maybe it doesn't have to be so easy either and mm -hmm. that there is another way other than just the conventional traditional methods that are thrown mm -hmm. at us every day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's the dream that's awesome yeah well, I, I think you'll do that I yeah really, i feel that yeah. i think i yeah, will I too might as well <laughs> yeah yeah well what would you um recommend for someone you know your age mm -hmm. um if they wanted to get involved with um, the healing arts or mm. or yoga or anything like that i would say one have an open mind mm -hmm. um i grew up with a religious mother mm -hmm. my stepdad is very religious mm -hmm. um and I was baptized. Nothing against religion. No, nothing against religion at all. <laughs> right. Because, right, what works for you works for you, right, and that's right, fine. Right. But I always resisted that. Uh, and I think part of that, part of me knew that there was another side to it that wasn't being showcased in a traditional method of this deeper spirituality and a deeper connection mm -hmm, to this being. Mm -hmm. um, so having an open mind about that and finding what works for you, whether it's meditation, whether it's yoga, whether it's going to the gym and punching a punching bag, but you make it spiritual, you make it about you and your mm -hmm. healing. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's going to church and praying, whether it's going to a mosque, finding some way to connect to that deeper part of yourself mm -hmm. and starting there and seeing what happens next, seeing what you're called to. Because mm -hmm. you, know, you were called to shamanism, mm -hmm. I was called to yoga therapy, some people are called to Reiki. Some people are called to, you know, holistic medicine. But 
again, 10,000 paths up the mountain to get to the yeah. same place. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's one of the beauties of it. It's, you know, when people ask, um, like, what is your definition of spirituality? Well, there's no one definition. Right, it's just, it's, right, it's, um, it's, it's unique to you. Right, yeah. right, and yeah. it could be, you know, connecting with nature. Right, There's. it could be going around rolling in the mud, and hey, if that works for you, that's totally okay. <laughs> Because it gets you to that place of connection. Yeah, and I think that's, um, you know, as I was saying before, that's really, because we're all one. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, there's no um, separation. There's no separation. At the end of the day, we all have the same bones, the same structure, the same blood, and, you know, we want yeah. the same things. Right, and, and you know, and, and spiritually with the whole with the universe, we're yeah. all connected. And we're all so. connected. Big spider web. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. how I like to see it as the big spider web of... Uh -huh. Connections. That's a that's that's a good um, image to have. Yeah. Yeah, and then behind it all um, is just love, right? Because that's right. what's supporting us. Um, my view, but more than anything, is um, once you tap into that, that universal, that love. You can't become unaware of the things you're already aware of. Mm. So you know what you know. You can't get rid of what you know. Yeah. You can forget momentarily, or you know, yeah. time can pass. No, but that's a good point. You. Once you find these deeper truths and once you mm. become aware of certain things, you can't really avoid them. You can try, mm -hmm. but they're going to mm -hmm. keep coming up. Mm -hmm. They're going to come up until you give them the attention that they want. Mm -hmm. And you, know, you just got to open yourself up to it right. because there's so much more to life. Yeah. Than having your head down, walking really fast down the sidewalk, getting to your job. Yeah. You know, <laughs> making money. Than the traditional nine to five college life, and uh. <laughs> you know, having having that connection with, you know, whomever or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, what's, what's bigger than you, what's greater right, than you. Right, right. So do you f have the feeling that other people um, of your generation are more open and are more accepting? I do. Searching, I think, if you will. I think that, you know, we are, as a planet, starting to awaken to some very mm. ugly truths and very uncomfortable situations. Mm -hmm. And I think that because of the generations that came before us, we have been set up to take responsibility mm. and to know that it doesn't just end with us. When we die, it gets passed on to all the lives that come next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we aren't responsible, who's going to be? Yeah. Who's going to be responsible if we don't take responsibility? So I think that, you know, over time, and, you know, you hear all about this, like, solar eclipse is awakening this. And, you know, mm -hmm. this astrology is, is happening over here and mm -hmm. awakening the divine feminine and the Aquarian age and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it does have validity yeah. because you see it in, mm -hmm. you know, people my age taking a stand and being heard and knowing that they have a right to be heard, which I think is yeah. a very new sentiment yeah. is that your voice matters and you can make a difference. Right, and we see it, we see it all the time now. Right. I mean, we, even the high school I kids, know. it's amazing. I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah. So have you, um, like the people that you associate with, do they, are they okay? I mean, I don't know how to ask the question, but um, do they think you're weird? No. <laughs> there are so many weirdos out there like me that, like, it's, I'm surrounded by weirdos. Okay. <laughs> but it's normal for us. Right. Well, I mean, you know? we do attract, you know, people who want to be tribe. with us. Right. 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 Yeah. And it's, um, it's interesting. The more I continue to show up and do the work, uh -huh. the more I invite in women who intimidate the hell out of me because they are a mirror and they force me to see things that I don't want to see about myself because it makes me uncomfortable mm. and because there's more work to be done. Mm. And the women I have in my life now are able to sit down and have the conversation about the hard things mm -hmm. um, and don't shy away or run away from it. So that's a huge And it's very powerful. Right yeah. um, and of course, it's hard to let go of some of the past social circles and the past relationships. Mm -hmm. And not saying you have to let go of them completely either, mm -hmm. because there's a time and a place for everything, and everybody serves a different purpose in your life. Right. But the women that are showing up in my life now recently have been very, um, very strong, empowered, successful, open, and extremely vulnerable. And it's just a mirror and a message as well mm -hmm. to keep doing what you're doing yeah. because you're attracting the right people. 
and yeah. you can only attract those people if you're right there with them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So all ages? Um. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I can, you know, connect with somebody who's twice or three times my age. Mm -hmm. I have a client who's 70 years old. She's almost 50 years older than me. Yeah. And, you know, I can connect with somebody who's 16 who's going through what I went through and is, yeah. is and who knows that there has to be another way who's having the same thoughts yeah, that I was. Yeah, what a, what a, what a wonderful find it's, for them, what a safe haven for them. It's very, um, it's very fulfilling. Yeah. Yeah. So were you very young when you had your, your traumatic? Uh, I was four years old. Um, my mother, I grew up only child with a single mother and she had Crohn's disease when I was very young. So she got very sick and she ended up being in the hospital for four months when I was a child. Oh, wow. um, and you know, my grandparents took great care of me and everybody maintained as much normalcy as possible because that's what a child needs is they need that safe mm. foundation, that normalcy, that you know, they don't need to be afraid yet. You know? yeah. But of course, you know, kids pick up on things yeah. and kids know. Um, and it really affected me in the sense of you know, fear of being alone and fear mm -hmm. of abandonment. Right. And of course that leads to seeking things so that you're not alone or seeking relationships so that you're not alone. And mm -hmm. it leads to codependency mm -hmm. and um, low self-esteem and mm -hmm. a lot of other things. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, over time it builds up to being in high school and having to go through what I went through mm -hmm. to, to get that awakening. Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't change it. <laughs> well, <laughs> because, it's your path, right? Because who would I be if I didn't have those experiences right. I, I wouldn't be sitting here no. have doing this interview I, I don't know what I would be doing honestly and I can't picture it any other way yeah well clearly that is your path and you're yeah um, you're not only walking it you're embracing it and oh yeah you know. <laughs> and all the weirdness <laughs> yeah even if it, it did take a lot of sounds like of some pain to get there yes um, but you have embrace that as well yeah and really come through so right. I really I'm really salute you for thank all, you for all that you've done and that you continue to do thank you yeah yeah so what else do you want to tell us about what you do mm. that would be helpful for our audience well I can tell you that I love it uh -huh. <laughs> I love it so much um, I always find myself so fulfilled and in awe of how committed people are to their healing hmm. um, I always find that I'm so honored to be working with the women I work with because they are the women who show up and who mm -hmm. continue to show up through that pain. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my, like I said at the beginning of the session, my, um, my appointments are all different mm -hmm. because everybody is different. Um, some things that stay the same are the intake and you know we go mm -hmm. through this whole right. Ayurvedic psychology checklist it's really cool and uh -huh. it's kind of my jam um, <laughs> and it kind of paints me a little picture of what might be going on on that energetic level mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know there's a specific protocol for every um, imbalance or every emotion that you might be holding on to. Hmm. And of course, you know, sometimes I intuitively just adapt and change things because I'm like, okay, like this seems like it's a little much for you. Let's back off and do this instead. Okay. Or, yeah. you know, let me help you facilitate this movement because I feel like, you know, you need some somebody to get in there and just be with you mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. um, so that stuff does change depending on, you know, who, sh who shows up mm -hmm. and, you know, it's funny, I have my clients do the same Ayurvedic psychology intake every single session, and you would not believe how much it changes. Like, people think oh. that they have this, like, one problem that's uh, always there. Uh -huh. It changes so much. Every single time, it's so different, and it really shocks both me and them to see that they aren't just stuck in this one place, that there is change, uh -huh. but it's all about how you see it right. and what you're thinking and how you perceive the situation that matters. Um, and of course, through the work, where we do work on the subconscious mind, mm -hmm. that perception changes. Yeah. Um, so it's really fascinating to see the progress over time and to see the changes. Um, I have one client who I've been working with for four or five months now. Mm -hmm. um, and I see her almost every week, depending on you know schedules. And you know, comparing the first time I met with her to the most recent times I've met with her. I mean, her 
capability to hold space for not only herself, but open up and connect to this deeper part of her has mm -hmm. immensely, immensely deepened. Wow. I mean, she is connecting spiritually to the point of seeing and, you know, seeing colors and seeing mm -hmm. visions and seeing images. Mm -hmm. And it's really amazing because it's not only helping her heal, it's helping her move forward and it's yeah. helping her deepen her connection to herself, which I think is the most important part of what I do. And I feel like mm -hmm. it kind of encapsulates everything else is when you deepen that connection you have to your body because we're not just a body i mean mm -hmm. we're sitting here and we know this we're not just a body and but we are living through this body mm -hmm. and the more we we deepen our connection to it and deepen our awareness of it and sit with it and honor it mm -hmm. i mean life just opens up and unravels around you mm -hmm. and it's just a beautiful thing wow. to see a wonderful description. Yeah. So you use their body in the work that you do? Um. Yeah. So it's similar to Thai massage in mm -hmm. the sense that I am holding your body, moving your body. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, I never force. Mm -hmm. um, I might motivate right, right. <laughs> lovingly. Yes. Um, but, you know, it's all about where those specific emotions or traumas are being held in the body. And we mm. discover that through the intake. I got you. And once we discover what's going on and where, we do this specific sequence to access that. Mm -hmm. And when we find that tension, and it's, you know, I mean, we could say the hips, but like where in the hips. So when mm -hmm. we find that specific location, mm -hmm. I mean, we stay there for a good eight or ten minutes. Mm -hmm. And there's a guided meditation that I lead you through okay. to... Because a lot of times when we feel tension in the body, we're like, oh, get, get this out of me. I don't like this. This is uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. What can I do to just work this mm -hmm. out? But so rarely do we just sit with it and feel it mm -hmm. and accept right. that it's there yeah. and then work towards healing it. So uh -huh. this work is all about just sitting with what's there. And it might seem very surface level at first. Oh, it's just, you know, a muscle ache mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the more you sit with it and the more you learn about it and the more it communicates with you because your body will literally start talking to you and telling you mm -hmm. what's going on, the more comes up and the more starts to unravel and you see this deeper web of, you know, all these intricate connections of, okay, well, maybe this is, you know, a product of fear of abandonment for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I, the second day of my yoga therapy training, I was getting worked on because, you know, we help each other. Mm -hmm. And not only five minutes into the session, my whole body started, you know, just vibrating. And oh my goodness. so it's, it's really powerful. That's awesome. Well, we're going to have to wrap up. Okay. But this was, it was so wonderful hearing from you tonight. Thank you. Becca, yeah. and I'm really glad. And we're going to put your um, graphics up on the screen with okay. your website and your contact info. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll see you soon, I hope. Yeah, it was so great to be here. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody.